A little while ago I did, um, well, a good while ago actually, I did a video on um, hinges. And the hinges are quite small, about three quarters of an inch, half inch or so. Um, nice simple affairs. Uh, I thought I'd show how to make a slightly longer barrel hinge. Um, in all honesty, uh, it's about the same as it is to make a normal one. You've just got more crenellations um, in it, if you like, in the barrel. Um, more bits there. Um, as you can see, I know all of the technical terms. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a hinge, um, inside hinge, to go in this uh, van brace, um, about that size there. So all I've done is I've cut a strip that's long enough for me to hold it. I would have preferred it to be a wee bit longer, if I'm honest. Um, but that was the off-cut that I had, um, so uh, that's what I've got to work with. So we'll start the process by bending that over and putting a nail uh, or a piece of metal through it so that we can start the um, basic shape of the hinge. But it's really straightforward, but um, I think at the time somebody mentioned it or maybe I dreamt it that they'd like to see how to do slightly more complicated hinges, so here we are. So as with hinges, uh, all the hinges I make, first things first, get the edge over. Um, I've got my anvil here and they come off with quite sharp edges. What I've done uh, is I've rounded that ever so gently. Um, so it's less of a sort of chisel tip, uh, which they can be sometimes, and um, just more of a rounded curve. Give yourself a bit of room. If you want a vague measurement on it, give it an inch or so. Um, but just give you enough so there's enough material to go around and for you then to be able to rivet it. Uh, to the van brace. There's no hard and fast but obviously that's wasteful and that's um, just plain daft. So um, about an inch, inch and a quarter or so and just start with a wallop just to crease that line in and take it over. Now these ones aren't going to be um, smashed to bits in any sort of HMB or heavy fighting um, so this is a bit of uh, 20 gauge mild um, all I do, really the only difference if I was doing them for heavier use would perhaps be to use some 20 gauge carbon, but they'll survive. So we've taken that over there and then just pull it back on itself. Quite straightforward. And start closing it down a bit. And now I've just got to find a nail or a bit of metal um, that will go inside there. I've normally got a bit over there that I use for these longer ones. So on this then, this is the one I'm going to use. I think if I remember correctly, it was a, I just needed a quick picker. So this is actually a um, mild steel welding rod. I've just knocked the uh, bits on the outside off of. And it's just a bit of um, uh, brass uh, round that I've got. I just wanted to show really that the hinges on a lot of this stuff are generally quite delicate, certainly in the early medieval period. Um, so something like that is just going to be too big, it's too conspicuous, it's too large. Um, you just want something that's a couple of mil, eighth of an inch, that sort of thing, um, to go inside the barrel there. Um, obviously use a piece that you can then find other versions of to put inside because it's no good making it to this and then discovering the only metal work you, you've got for the barrels is that size because then you're um, in trouble. But I've got tons of welding rods so I'll just smack some more off of one of those. But any wire will do. What I used to use was old metal coat hangers. Um, they work quite nicely. But it's just got a point on there just to make it easier to feed in. See it's a bit large so we'll just tamp it in securing it. Get it over the edge of the anvil so that I can see just between this and the anvil face there. tap it over. To be honest, a lot of the medieval hinges I've seen, that would be more than enough for a finished piece. But what I like to do is get a nice broad chisel. It's nice and rounded there. Drop it in the shoulder. Just check you can see just about. One second. Look at that. Amazing editing there. So I drop it into the shoulder of the anvil and just tamp it in. Just neatens that edge up. Bear in mind this edge won't be seen, but I want it crisp against the side of the van brace. Don't go too far with this, because the temptation is you keep going, you think it's looking nice and crisp, and you're actually putting that metal underneath this, which we don't want it to do. We want it to be just about square, like there, hopefully. 
I can make this work, see if I can do this. There you go. I don't want it underneath this piece here at all. That will create all manner of trouble uh, later for the movement of the mechanism. Get it back over the anvil, dress it back, tamp it down, and then remove this and do it again. So I've made the other one there. You see I'm not too fussed about these being the same size. There's no need to worry about things like that. Let's turn on the light, maybe we'll be a bit more conspicuous. There we go. So yeah, don't worry about things like that. You can always tidy things like that up later. Just make sure you've got enough room to be able to put rivets in the mechanism. If you have a bit of trouble getting out, I've found if you grab hold of the uh, piece that's going through with pliers and then work that bit, it come out easier than trying to do it the other way. Can't explain it, but it seems to work for the most part. There we go. So, done. We've got our two halves of one hinge. So we go then, we've got our two um, hinge halves here, obviously we need another set, there's probably enough there to make one more just about, but it becomes a bit of a pain. Um, I'll just cut some more uh, in a bit, but we'll push on with this one. Now, in the, uh, the barrel, you've normally got either side of the hinge. I haven't found any hard and fast rules yet as to how many they had. Um, generally on more traditional hinges, it tends to be about 25% either side and then a nice longer 50% there, but You'll always find exceptions. On these longer ones, I haven't found anything yet um, that I can I can see readily. Um, an easy way of dividing these up, oh, if you're going to use a ruler, sorry. If you're going to use a ruler, um, there you go, that's just by fluke, that's six centimetres, so you could go every centimetre, uh, one and a half centimetres. The thing I find with metric measurements is they tend to get spotted um, on the armour. Uh, it makes it look a bit strange sometimes, because obviously they weren't working to metric. Not all, you know, sometimes they'd just fluke it and it'd be metric, but not always. Um, so I try to avoid that sort of thing. I bought one of these tools uh, when I started a good while ago. I've not got a clue what it's called. Uh, show me by a bricklaying chum, and it basically just opens out and will give you an even ish. You know, this one's a bit old now, so you can see some bits move and other bits don't, but it will give you a, a relatively even quick way of dividing a line even on smaller things like this that you can um, use it Ooh, I'm guessing they're about a centimeter the model looks of that but that helps you out if you want to do that sort of thing or just judge it by eye um, like I say I haven't found any hard and fast rules on these yet but it may exist so what I tend to do first of all is halve it you can just about judge that easily enough and then halve those again and there you go there's my barrels done uh, if you want more, then you have to faff around. You know, the good Lord and his wisdom gave us fingers and thumbs of different widths, so you can use different ones for measurements. and just get them done and nice and quick. Um, I don't think they were spending an awful lot of time on this. They needed to get the hinges made um, and copious amounts of them. So I'm going to go with that at the moment, because that will mean we'll have two positives there on this side to that side, and that should give us enough of a grip. Um, maybe torn the outside, don't know, but we'll go with that for the time being. So what I do, as always, is colour in the ones I'm going to remove. Typically I've not got the right bit on the grinder, so just while I'm changing this, uh, I have mentioned that um, about doing sort of talking head presentation videos, uh, direct to camera, on topics that perhaps aren't techniques, so sort of, you know, how to get started, um, all those sorts of questions. If, if, if you have any of those sorts of questions, drop them in the comments or send me a message or whatever, and I'll see what I can do. Um, with sort of just general advice. I mean, bear in mind, it's only my advice. I'm not the be all and end all of armoury. I'm a relatively new kid on the block, to be fair. I've been going, I think it's 10 or 11 years now. Um, so, you know, I've built up some experiences in that time, and it might be if I'm lucky I can speak to some of the more experienced guys, and they may well chime in as well if um, I can convince them to talk on camera. So if you've got any questions, oh, like how to keep the camera stable, 
you got any questions then by all means ask and I'll see what I can do if I can help so anyway to the actual job at hand clear what I can space this is the messy end of the, of the bench the messier end of the bench this turns out the way there we go so we're set with the grinder put my ears and my eyes in all I'm going to do is fetch those marked areas um, out. That one's been smudged a bit, so I'm just going to quickly remark that so I know I'm not drifting. So what's happened is I've got a mark there that's kind of stood on his own a bit. I'm going to make sure I've got some definite ends to these. There we go. Obviously smudged it as I was putting it in the vise. I've got some soft grip bits in the vise here, you don't need those, you can just grip it in the vise or a couple of bits of wood, aluminium, anything really, just saves marking it, you don't need it so much on these ones because you're not going to see this, you're only going to see the barrel. So there we go, we're in, I think it can be seen, I'll get that out of the way, it's looking a bit confusing out there. And remove that, don't know what's on these oily rags, often oil, could be linseed oil or anything like that, you get sparks on it, you can be setting your workshop aflame. So make sure your area is at least clear of combustibles. So there we go, all done. At least those cuts. Get hold of it. It's going to be red hot, so unless you've got asbestos fingers, I can't cope with that sort of thing. That's why I've got tools for it. I was imagine I've got fingers like steel that can withstand all sorts of temperatures, but I could barely pick up a cup of coffee. I think we've got tools to save your fingers and use them. So there we go, we're all clued in a bit tighter there. And then all I'll do, prefer a new one of these discs for something like this because they're a bit short, but we'll see how we go. of options on a piece like this you can if you thought ahead use a power file to get in there look and you can fetch that out I tend to find though unless you've got a big aggressive piece to get rid of I wouldn't use them personally it could be a bit aggressive so let me just move the camera again normally I'd edit this out but I seem to be in a talkative mood and it's freezing in the workshop so the thought of starting and stopping and setting everything up is uh, leaving me a bit cold, so to speak. Yeah, well, maybe I will edit this out, or at least speed it up. Let's just do that. Really doesn't like that hinge. It's obviously shocked at my workmanship. There we go. Right, we'll leave that in. So, got a little file here. Unfortunately, I snapped my files I would normally use for this the other day by accident. No, the replacements haven't arrived yet. So, you just take that away. Although, I've just had a brainwave, and I think my wife across the workshop there may have a couple. So, bear with me. Here we go. Lovely, that's a bit easier. Now, what I've found years back in is 
if you go straight with any sort of file across something this size, what tends to happen is you end up with a bit of a wibbly line. You sort of dig bits into it. So if you go across, it's less likely that will happen. It's quite an old file I'm discussing. Must treat myself to a new file. Just a shame I can't get that in there. Let's have a look. It's one bit here that's quite high. As I say, the file I would usually use for this are snaps. I'm down to these more delicate ones. But you'll get there, just don't rush. Oops, like I am. Take your time. Generally, you can tell when you're there because these flaky bits, oh, there you go, they lift off. I've seen some hinges on medieval armour, original pieces, that are shockingly poorly made. Um, so, square bits off because they weren't all badly made. So, it's wobbling there. When you get that noise, it's normally because it's not secure in the vice, and if you look. I can move that. It's because of this, the rubber bits all burnt out on the end there. there Get things as square as you can so it'll make the movement of the hinge better. What I mean by that is these bits of the barrel here, you want them like that. If that top piece is at that sort of angle, it makes the marrying in the next bit nigh on impossible. But also if you do manage to do it, when it starts moving, they're all going in different directions. You end up with a very stiff mechanism. So just spend a couple of minutes tidying it. It's always easy with medieval stuff to say that everything's really poor quality and oh, they were just charging through it. Um, but some of these hinges are pieces of workmanship. Absolutely amazing. So pick the fight, decide on what the client wants, what they deserve perhaps, but have a have a chat with them, what they're trying to portray, and take it from there. Just tidy those up. There we go. So, go back to the other one. That's how I snapped my other one. We'll go back to the other hinge and we'll get these married up. So, here we go then. We've um, just cut this. Now, you can see with this, you can do as many of them as you want, right? There really isn't anything complicated about these hinges. Oh. I swear someone asked me about it and I said I'd um, get it sorted for them and I never did. So this is me trying to backtrack. Or well, maybe I just imagined it. But you can see, if, if that was just a normal hinge, that's as far as you'd go, look. But all you're doing is you just added another one. And then, just as before, hold the one you're going to mark. Get yourself a reasonable sharpie, and then mark the areas in full that you're going to remove. Uh, it's really easy to draw a couple of lines then cut the same spaces out and even when it's marked sometimes you mark the wrong ones. I, I, I did it so much when I started. So the area I'm going to want to remove off of this one is that. So mark it up. And this one. So I make an end mark. Walk it in. There we go. Don't try and be too accurate but be too small if you see what I'm saying. There we go. We'll get those on the um, and get those removed. So making these things doesn't need to be complicated. Um, some people much prefer to have them all marked out and cut everything out while it's flat. I, when I started I, I just I don't know I wasn't accurate enough who, who knows what was going on but I I just didn't get on with that sort of um, workmanship and I much prefer to sort of do it as I'm going. Um, personally I think as well it gives a slightly more medieval look to things. Um, but you know, there's plenty of people who do it the other way that still manage to make things look fantastic. So, you know, pick your fights and stick with it. So, there we go, we'll get those bits fetched out. Something that's worth um, 
mentioning as well. When you go cut these lines, I cut slightly inside them because I can. That's a couple of strokes with a file to remove that extra material. Now give us our snug fit. But if you are doing this with a grinder, it's very difficult sometimes to ace placing it into the um, mark. So the bit I'm going to remove, I don't care about. So what I do is when you offer the grinder up touch it a couple of times on the bit you don't care about that'll give you some brightness so you can see where you're going and you can essentially walk your way up until you're satisfied your way you need to be really gently just feathering it in and then you can make the cut um, and that makes for a much more uh, accurate cut with the grinder so anyway, I'll fetch this one out Always worth getting this as square as you can because when you cut you're all set to move and a nice sort of bodily motion like that so the whole thing cuts square rather than trying to just do it with the, your fingers um, but if this isn't square then you can end up in a bit of mischief there you go. we'll just fetch that out again like we did the other one So we'll file that out and then we're ready to see if I've messed this up. So as before get rid of these feathered bits here. If I had lots of filing to do I'd lower this in the vise. It's a bit high and a bit wobbly but we'll be alright. It's a bit high so we'll, we'll lower it down. What can happen is if you're too high up in the vise, the work picks up a vibration as you're trying to do it, and you waste a lot of energy. I've been told off a few times in my videos because I do mistreat my files, I rake them backwards and forwards. For the most part, they tend to be cheapies, um, which I don't care about. Uh, I've had some nice ones from Wilkinson, I looked after those. But you should. Uh, with most western files it's on the push stroke is when the um, action takes place so you sort of in and then back and your files will last a lot longer the work will be very accurate and you won't get quite so many uh, comments berating you on YouTube um, when I'm tend to be these I tend to just be backwards and forwards which isn't best for the file um, or the accuracy of the work to be honest I believe I'm told that um, Eastern files, Japanese files, I don't really know where it starts and stops, they're actually done on the return, which I hate because I've dragged my fingertips into everything. This, this, this way I, I'm not hurting myself. But there you go. A little bit of filler while I'm working. So we get that done, we want to make sure that these lines here are below the edge of the, the barrel, just about. So we're going to put a bit of metal in there and it's going to catch it. So I'll go grab the other half. There we go. And we'll offer it up. There we go. I can see I've got a, almost a file's width to remove from this one. Yeah, so get the slightly more aggressive file. Remember, don't push down too hard because you'll dig a little divot in there. Take it from working that way mostly. So. What I tend to do is work it on an angle so I can see 
I'm really close to where I want to be. Just take the back of it and square it up. Getting there, a little bit more. Square up the bottom edge. What can happen often as you're doing that, as you're working, so you want to kick that bottom edge in. Now remember, at the end of the day, the hinge just has to work. It doesn't have to be a work of art of its own. They would have had armies of jewelers and the likes making hinges. Whilst a bit of craftsmanship in its own right, it doesn't appear to have been as important as the overall look of the armour, unless it's some of the really nice pieces of hinge work I've seen. Now this file hasn't snapped, I don't know. What you're looking to do is be able to get that in there. So as it starts to feed in, see what's not even, what's square. This bit here it just needs a bit out in that corner. I can actually do this. There we go. Now I can see. Now that's going in there. That's not square. You see how that comes back this way? I think. Hopefully on the camera. Yeah. There we go. So that's needs that corner bit taken out now as luck would have it it's the wrong way around in my handedness but we'll give it a try that's what I was saying before about having these as square as you can because then the hinge will move well if there are angles it will still move quite probably but just not very nicely. When a customer tries on your armour, the last thing you want to be doing is making excuses for the stiff movement of the hinges. There we go. That's just about on there. So we'll go back over there and we'll stick the pin in the middle and we'll see what sort of movement we've got. So there we go, I've got my pin from before, we'll just see if we can even, sometimes you get lucky, armour and gods are with you, normally do this on the anvil, we're here so, just tap it gently, I remember there's burrs and bits and pieces in here, so make sure it's not winding off because sometimes you can be well out and tears will be out. Might have to move to the anvil. Let's get this over a hole. There we go. Oh, I've nailed it to the desk. So, there's a make hinge. Yeah, let's just get that past there. It's a bit stiff. I don't like that very much. Hinge is working okay. There we go. I think it's just a burr inside there. Just catching it. Could loosen it off a little bit I think perhaps but it's moving fluidly uh, it's moving fluidly so I'll take those off I think I'll be tempted to leave that because it'll be nice and secure it's not just going to flap and move around but it moves consistently throughout the processes and hinges will only get lighter as they go and what I'll do next as you've seen on other videos, I think. As obviously I'll snip the ends off, give them a couple of taps. That's designed to go on this flatter piece that's just here. And then we're away. So it's quite straightforward. And just rivet it in, cut it in, rivet it in. But that's how you make a slightly more complicated hinge. And you can see realistically, it's um, just the same way as making a normal hinge, to be honest. 
um, but you've just got a couple more of these and if you have more just put in more you can see using the method I use with the grinder you could use a file uh, a, a chisel as well on that bit I suppose um, but you can see how doing that just means you haven't got to waste time at the beginning measuring it up and it's relatively quick at the back end to get that done so there you go how to make a hinge I hope that was uh, useful stick it in like that there goes not many of those I can do that but there you go how to make a hinge reasonably straightforward um, quick to do and much nicer than buying hinges um, from hardware stores and putting them in because um, it looks far more medieval so I hope that was useful and uh, like I said before uh, if you've got any questions any sort of talking head sort of things where I can chat to the camera perhaps give a little bit of advice or my my opinion after like I say 11 years of doing this now uh, I would be more than happy to do that so hopefully I'll hear some uh, comments below or read some comments below and um, like I say that's of some use